G'day, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is not a nightmare. Do not adjust <laughs> your TV sets. I am Justin Harrison. I'm in Auckland. They let me through customs. I've had a few bricks thrown at me already. I'm here with Millsy and Dag Boy, who look like they've skated here on a tandem skateboard. <laughs> the self-proclaimed male model of New Zealand. Oh, well. The fruit flyer that is Bryn. <laughs> Hostess with the mostess. Kirsty, who's busy saving some money, so one day she can afford a full set of jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, kick, Let's it. kick it off. Oh, oh, good. Good. Tonight on kickoff, records are on the line. The Black Ferns look to increase their dominance over the Wallaroos. Can they make it 19 and 0? It's been 33 years since the Wallabies won, but after the shock shafting in Perth, the most prized record goes on the line at Eden Park. We track the changes and dangers ahead of Bledisloe 2. From the West Island, legendary Wallaby lock Justin Harrison joins us on the couch. And as always, surprises, dad jokes and some questionable chat. Let's kick it off. Welcome into the kickoff. While the World Cup clock is ticking, just five weeks away from the opening round and 38 days to be exact. It's pretty scary. The Australians, well, they have crossed the Tasman full of confidence and the All Blacks, well, we are hurting a little bit at the moment. But this is the week to make things right. And we've got a very special guest, Justin. It's the first time I've heard G'day in a wee while. Yeah, G'day. You want to hear it again? <laughs> Unreal uh, intro. A fantastic Unreal intro. intro. A fantastic intro. intro. I, tell, I tell you what's happening in in Australia, let me just give you a quick snippet. Right? I'm living in Sydney, living in a small suburb. There's been a team of Kiwi tradesmen across the road doing some renovations on the house last four months, right? And they got onto the fact that I'm who I am. They've been giving me a whole heap of curry every time. <laughs> Monday morning, I got up early, walked over there with my, with my wallaby scarf on and stood in the middle of the building side so and said, what do you got to say now? <laughs> <laughs> you got your chance, don't you? Can't say anything. It is all week. Then I ran away. Yeah. They're busy people... robbing me now. <laughs> <laughs> For some people at home that may not know what you've done, we're just going to do a wee introduction to the show, an initiation, as, as all rugby teams, as all teams actually do. And it, it, yeah, it is. It's hazing. And yeah. it's this game called Would You Rather. So I'm going to start off. Mm. Would you rather lose all of your hair or lose the Bledisloe Cup this weekend? Hair. I'm happy to go hair. Happy to go hair for the rest of your life. Forever. You don't want that, bud. He's already, <laughs> he's already done that <laughs> deal. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. It's called Will. You're Will Wardle. You're Will Wardle. Get rid of that Bledisloe Cup. Instant loss or just start losing? Instantly forever. Right, just a full-on... <laughs> Q stick, yep. no hair. You've already said it. Yeah, I'm happy. You take the cup. Okay, yeah. Mills. Would you rather the boys win the Blizzard Cup this weekend or get a free shot at Ali Williams' face? <laughs> Oh, I can get a shot at Ali Williams' face any time I want. <laughs> oh, you okay. can. I'll take the blitters, though. Happy You'll days. take the blitters, though, again, as if you've got one. Oh, no, mine's a bit... <laughs> Say it, mate. Would you rather... <laughs> oh, here we go. HR. A massage. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're talking about Japan or Russia. Stop. I think Stop. You're <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. What's the exchange rate? Uh, <laughs> you, friend, you must have something good. I'm actually going to go the way of Daggers one Russia. as well. Would you rather have a hairline like Daggers or be bald like George Cregan? Oh, I'd like everything that George Cregan's got. <laughs> George Green? I want to go with that hairline. Are you serious? Look at it. I want to go with what? Look at my hairline. It's fully straight. That's now. not a line, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's hanging on for dear life. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. That's cliffhanger. That's what I was saying. Really Last one, and it's already oh. been brought up a wee bit, but would you rather pick a fight with Ali Williams or Justin Marshall? Oh, it's a good one. Oh, Marshy, easy, smaller. <laughs> Marshy, well, you've already had a wee run in with like him, haven't you? He's hair ruffled, does No. It? What about his eyes? Nah, it wasn't me. I knew you were I promise you, if you replay this clip, he gets hit by um, Case Muse. Okay, I'm pretty sure okay. it's Casey. Well, there's one half of the that story. Green all the time, isn't it? That's not what Marshy says. Let's move on, though, <laughs> to your weekend. There's a lot of international rugby coming up. First of all, the Black Ferns against the Wallaroos. It's the rematch live from Eden Park at 4.15, followed by the All Blanks against the Wallabies. There is TDL commentary on both of those matches, as well as close commentary. And Wales, well, they get another go at England on Sunday morning. And in Pretoria, while well, South Africa take on Argentina, Italy take on Russia and 
and France against Scotland, all warming up to Japan 2019. But first of all, we're going to talk about the Black Ferns up against the Wallaroos. And while our men, they may be a bit wounded, well, the Wallaroos are too because the women absolutely thrashed them in Perth. And it's game two of the Trans-Tasman Clash for the Laurie O'Reilly Memorial Trophy this weekend. So let's take a look at the team list because Glenn Moore has made a few changes to his team, three changes to be exact. But if we look at the forwards first, Pia Tapsell, well, she only made her debut in the Super Series and she's already cemented her spot in that number six jersey. In the backs, Aisha Leti Ayinga, while she was very impressive in Perth, scoring a try running 144 metres from the wing. So look out for her this weekend. And on the bench, three newcomers, Luca Connor, Jackie Patia Fereti and Grace Brooker, who's a fantastic story. She travelled out of New Zealand for the first time last weekend to go to Perth. Wow. Didn't get into the team, into the 23. This weekend, though, she gets a chance to make her debut. And you know her because she's a Canterbury lady. Oh, what a great opportunity for her. She's been with us, Dagger and myself and the Crusaders and Canterbury for the last, I'd probably say the last couple of years. Yeah. And for her, she's an awesome, awesome woman. And the fact that she gets an opportunity to run out at Eden Park as well, like a lot of those girls. Yeah. Um, you know, what a great opportunity for her. So really looking forward to seeing how she goes. It is a great opportunity for her. It's a great opportunity for the ones that are lining up in the midfield. This is our head-to-head, -head, our big match-up for that match. And Mills, well, you know... Kelly. You know <laughs> Alicia quite well, don't you? Well, look, I know I've seen her play. You, you've got to remember a couple of years ago when she played for Queensland as well, um, you know, how sort of uh, what she showed, big hits, her running game. Unfortunately, last week, they didn't quite get front foot ball, but a very, very good young talent. Look at that, you know, some of those offloads that she does. So I'm looking forward to that. Hall I hear you related well. to her. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a long story. It's a long story, mate. It's a long We've story. We've got a bit of time. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to... Uh, that, this matchup with uh, Carla as well, who's um, you know who's been feeding the, the back line very well. Okay, well we are going to move on to the forwards, and we're going to talk about the Lucy Charmaine McMinimum. She played very well in Perth. Uh, you're the only forward on the panel, so we'll talk to you. <laughs> what do you expect from a big number eight? Oh, look, all the things that I couldn't really do. <laughs> Breaking tackles, robust in attack. You know, it's a physical game. One thing that is very easy to push past this test, this is a genuine test match that we saw. And the thing, the significant thing about it, Stephen Larkin's been spending time with the Wallaroos as, as their backline coach. They've got a full-time forwards coach and a full-time head coach. They had a series against Japan. I'm talking about the Wallaroos here. Series against mm. Japan, two test home series. First time in history. Fastest growing sport in the world, women's rugby. What a great... What a great spectacle. Mm. It's a really young squad. Well, not necessarily young, but uh, they are lacking quite a bit of experience. There's seven players in the starting 15 that have only three camps, and that's from the Japan series and then playing in Perth last week. But there's one winger that really stood out last week, and that's Laurie Kramer. Is there your, your domain on the wings? Yeah, oh, she got a great opportunity last week, and she, she took them with, with both, both hands. Um, one of the balls spat out the side of the ruck, and she ran 60 metres to score the try. Great offer there to... Yeah, a few meat pies. I've scored a few myself. Here she goes here. She's got great wheels. She's quick. What I love about this is Charmaine Smith ran the whole way. She's a lock to maybe stop that ball going underneath the post. And, you know, that just shows the heart of both teams. That Fleet footed though, inexperienced, but really showing what she has at the top level of the game. And so is the number 10 for New Zealand. We're talking about Ruahe Dumont. Last week, we yeah. asked her to run the show from 10. She ran the cutter superbly, Mills, and she scored an excellent solo try. Oh, some of the touches. Look at this. I mean, that's what you want for your number 10. Yeah, her kick, she wouldn't have been too happy uh, with the execution, but it still came off. I uh, love the offloads, but just her, just her management, you know, the management of the game and, and making sure everyone's in the right spot and little touches of brilliance as well, like that, you know, uh, in defence and being able to rip the, the ball clear uh, and just run the cutter. And that's what you want from your, from your number 10. I think we talked about earlier last week as well, the combination between mm. uh, Kendra, Carla and Chelsea. You know, I thought those three were absolutely outstanding on the weekend. The way Mills had come back to your point, the way they had the game management through the week and through that game. Uh, it was probably world class, so you know, congratulations, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, it is a semi-professional game now for our women. They've been busy during the week, but in Perth they did these little mini-team videos <laughs> and we've got one from the Kiko Berries and it's awesome. Sit back and relax. Yeah. Yeah. And no one like me. Yeah. 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 Congratulations, you made it. Welcome to the Crusader. It's been a long time. 
time coming, yo. But I'm here now. What you want to do? I'm going to do what you really know. So, like this. Like this. Like this. Let's do it. How many dudes you know roll like this? How many dudes you know flow like this? Not many, infinity, not many, infinity. How many dudes you know got the skills to go and rock a show like this? Uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't know anybody. Check, check, the mic, check, the one, two, three, two, three, two, what you hype yet? How many dudes you know roll like this? How many dudes you know flow like this? Not many, if any, not many, if any. How many dudes you know rock the shoes and head and rock the show like this? Uh huh, uh huh, I don't know anybody. It's fine. You don't know that one, Justin? You didn't want to sing along? It was an up one and Aussie. This is a nightmare. It was an up one and Oz. There's way too many syllables in that for it to be a Kiwi song. Well, here it is the All Blanks taking on the Wallabies live from Eden Park at 6.45. It's the decider and the equation is simple. The All Blacks need to win, take the pressure off a little bit and get their path back on track for the Rugby World Cup and, well, keep the Bledisloe Cup in their possession as well, which they've done pretty well since 2002, the last time. And you were, you were there, Justin, you were playing. I was there, thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> That's the only good thing you're going to get a mention of. <laughs> OK, well, the Australian media, media, this week they have had an absolute field day. Mm -hmm. But we're going to look at the team list first of all, and there has been changes. Steve Hansen, he has wielded the axe. He said they were punched in the mouth by the Wallabies, and changes needed to happen. No Scott Barrett in the locks, so in comes Patrick Tuipulotu to fill the gap. Is he the right man, Mills, in there? I think he is. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to something. This is his big moment I've, from what I've seen. Physical, and that's what we lacked last week. You know, for him to go out there and just focus on that physicality, don't worry about getting out in the back line too much and just hit rucks and smash people. So I reckon it's a really big opportunity for Patrick to get out there and, and show his stuff. In the backs, the 10 15 combination, we see it again, third test in a row. Richie Moonga, Bowden Barrett, we're going to see this at the Rugby World Cup. Yeah, and, and it's, we just need time, and they got th this is their third opportunity to do it, and, and it's starting to work. Mm. They're just trying to figure out, now Mills, you spoke to me pre game, we're still at Sunday here, but they're starting to figure out. <laughs> you can steal it, mate, it's fine. Yeah, you know, who's gonna like? They're just still deciding who's gonna take the first pass off nine, and then the other guys. They're both playmakers. They want their hands on the ball. So once they sort that out and figure that out, then it's gonna flow nicely. And, and I'm excited for the outside backs. That's, oh, yeah. that's where it's at yeah. for me. And we can't go past talking about the Wallabies. 474 caps on the bench. It's almost as many as in their starting side. It is ridiculous. Adam Ashley Cooper's got a fair chunk of those. He'll be playing in his 118th test. Oh. But there's a debutant, and you know him well from the Reds, Liam Ryan. What can you tell us about him? Oh, he's had a great super campaign. For, you know, the thing about this squad, this Wallaby squad now, is that we're not having players dropped into test jerseys and trolling them in test yeah, matches, yeah, which yeah, historically yeah. we have. Yep. This is a team that's been picked on merit. Liam Wright deserves a starting position. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Michael Hooper all year and had similar statistics. So what we've got now is a Wallaby pack, and you see in the test count on the, on the reserves bench, mm. don't you? You see a, a Wallaby team that has experience across it. You've got blokes that have gone overseas and come back better players. Mm. You've got all sorts of rugby maturity happening in that squad. So that's a positive thing for us. Well, he's at one end of the rugby spectrum, and so some of the All Blacks are at the complete other end. I mentioned it earlier, the Old Blacks, the Australian media, having an absolute <laughs> frenzy. They used the face app, and I'm sorry, but we did this a month ago, so it's a wee bit old. But seriously, how have the Wallabies and how have Australian media reacted this week? We heard this morning that they thought the All Blacks had panicked some of their selections. That just looks like my mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Same, buddy. What are they showing us here? Oh, look, it's, you know, it hasn't it's been few and far between having the opportunities to have a dominant performance against number one side in the world. You know, Don't forget it. To that is not forgotten. <laughs> well, you know, and look, trans-Tasman rivalry and all of that, but historically, we are a band of brothers with New Zealand, you know. Yeah. We, you know, mm. world conflicts, we've always been the first to jump on the boat and help each other out and commit lives, right? Mm. And that's why this Bledders, this Lord Bledersloe competition, it's amazing. It's mm. an amazing competition. It's a bit like having a fight with your twin brother for the Lego piece in the back seat of the car. <laughs> you, know, you know each other's <laughs> move every time and they're ferocious and you're not going to give it up. What about the guys that have been dropped? Steve Hansen was open in saying that some guys, three of them, have been dropped. He wants to see them playing better. We're talking about Ben Smith, Rico Ioane and Owen Franks. What do you think about this? Are we under some serious pressure, Bryn? Um, I think Steve said it earlier in his press conference this week that obviously they were going to get the opportunity. So, um, you know, you could take it, take it however you want to. But I think it's just a great opportunity for the guys that are coming out, like Bridgie and obviously Sevu, who's obviously really new to the test, to the test level. But... Again, these guys will get these opportunities again. You know, it's a 
the goal is to win the World Cup, you know. So obviously we're playing in the bleeders low. Guys get the opportunities, but no doubt we'll see those guys feature within the World they, Cup. They haven't been dropped out of the blue, right? We saw some clips there against South Africa, Argentina. They weren't, weren't you know, weren't dominant either. So this is not a surprise, really. Yeah. You've had some players that haven't played that well. One that's come back from is a very serious injury and possibly too early. Yeah. But how rewarding is that for a player? I mean, yeah. to, to be able to say, yeah, ideally they would, would, would have hoped they would have won last week, and then you can slot, you know, Reese and, uh, and and Bridge in there, and you say, well, you know, that was always going to happen. But how much of a confidence booster is that for those two men to say, well? Well, you know, the coach is actually putting us in there in a, in a do or die situation. This is what they want. They want to see that pressure on these guys. It's the pressure cooker, isn't it? You talk about pressure and it is going to be hot. It is going to be ruthless this weekend. Our head-to-head, -head, our big matchup. Well, we're talking about the Fijians because aren't they spectacular to watch? We're talking about Marika Korobete from Australia and Sevu Reese, who you've already mentioned, and both of you. Well, you didn't actually play with them, did you, is it? You gave him your contract. I gave him half of my contract. No, no, you, <laughs> no you didn't. You still got paid full. Half. You still uh, yeah. Well, what He's a wonderful. The man in your <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. What a wonderful story for Sevu. You know, he played in ITM Cup, was going to go overseas, got an opportunity for Crusaders, took that with open arms, and. He's just, yeah, taking every opportunity when it comes. And, and that's what you want to see from the young guys. And that's what I'm excited this week. You get young guys coming in, they bring excitement to the game, and that's what you need. And Marika, like, he's just a solid player coming from league, just runs good lines, runs hard, tackles hard. His try underneath the sticks, you know, he got only looking for work. Yeah. Just got his yeah. hands on he's, the ball. He's a human right. He's just like, a... <laughs> he's like every time he's near the ball, something good happens. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing to remember, you mentioned the league aspect. This is a guy that's learning rugby now. I mean, we know Fijians have rugby in their DNA, yeah. but league's vastly different to Union, and he's now positioning himself. Back play, pendulum with the back three in defence. He doesn't overread and close. He used to he used to do that a lot in Super yeah, Rugby. Yeah, yeah. It's getting better. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's stick with the wings then, because George Bridge gets another opportunity this week. His first time starting for the All Blacks, but between the two wingers, they've only got four Test caps between them. You know Bridgie well. Yeah. How do you think he's going to go? Oh, I think he's going to he's going to go awesome. I think the last this wasn't just this year that he's played well. The last two years, three years yeah. that have actually been in the squad, um, he's been his growth has been awesome. So, I think the best thing about Bridgie is his work rate off the ball. Yeah. Um, he's one of the best wingers in I think the world with his work rate. So um, his ability to be able to work that pendulum yeah. that you said, um, especially in our environment, is really crucial. And I'd like to think that um, he could bring that come Saturday night. So I did okay. pay attention in the back's, <laughs> the back's hairdressing salon. Yeah. I, uh, every now and then when I stuck my head in, I heard that pendulum yeah, thing. Yeah, nice. yeah, nice. Yeah. Went on strings, bud. What colour are you going with, Brew? <laughs> That's Brew. about it. What's Brew? <laughs> <laughs> the one Kiwi we would let. <laughs> that, was, okay. that was tackle practice day. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on from the backs now and talk about the forwards for a wee bit. We're going to go to the props. The Kiwi props have been under some serious heat this week because their scrum, well, it wasn't up to scratch from what we're used to. Joe Moody, he keeps the spot. Nepo Lalala comes in. How do you think these guys are going to go? Will anything change in that tight fight? Well, I think significantly what we saw on the weekend was the game that Nick White plays. We were talking, I was talking earlier with Bryn about halfback and challenging both sides of the breakdown, which means that tight fives don't get a chance to rest. You take that lazy line in defence. So what they're going to have to do is be active and fresh. And we saw a fatigue type five on the weekend. We didn't see what we normally see midfield, some passing and interaction. Uh, so multi-skilled definitely, but just a better work rate. This is probably still a concern because you remember he hasn't just come out this week, uh, Steve Hansen, and said that. He's, he came out yeah. before Super Rugby and said our props aren't good enough. So they're not moving around, they're not fit enough. And everyone's cottoned on to that now. Mm. So he really needs a big shift from these big guys because that's possibly what well, it is an area that uh, Aussie beat us up in, that physicality and getting around the corner, making sure we're set yeah. nice and early. Mm. Yep. John Hart was absolutely ruthless this week. He said that our props are lacking mobility around the park. He was not impressed with them at all. And changes have been made and the same for the midfield. Sonny Bill Williams slots in. No Jack Goodhue. So he links up with Anton Leonard Brown. But he's been playing for Counties Monaco a couple of games. How is he going to go? Is he going to bring what the All Blacks need him to bring? Well, he'd be taking a lot of confidence out of his games with Counties. He's got two 80 minutes um, performances with them. He played extremely well. Like, when you go back and play ITM, you know, teams, people meet. Uh, expect you to write, light it up on fire. But for him, he just did his role solid, carried the board hard, did a few offloads, did the sunny bill of old. But he's coming into this, this back line and he's the experienced mm. campaigner. He's been in two World Cups, so yeah. they're going to look to him for, for some experience. These are his stats against Counties Monaco. 12 carries, four defenders beaten, two clean breaks and five offloads. Just typical stats that we're used to seeing from Sonny Bill Williams and we hope that translates to this weekend as well. 
OK, well, we are going to cross the Tasman because it's not enough to just have one wallaby on the show. <laughs> Tim Warren, he was so great last week, so we're bringing him back in. It's great to have you with us, Tim. And, well, this is your one and only chance you can brag, so I hope you do it well. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me back. Uh, what a performance from the Wallabies. It was fantastic, wasn't it? And uh, i tell you what, the All Blacks are, are running scared at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're dropping the best player in the world, Ben Smith. What's going on? Oh, I, I can't believe I'm actually... I should be in New Zealand at the moment. I, I left my passport at home in Bruce. I'm actually in Melbourne in a hotel room at the moment. So I'm waiting for my passport to come down. So I've got a night in Melbourne and... Um, Izzy, I've got a little um, <laughs> got a spare spot for you. Hey, mate, I'm, I'm coming to Noosa on Monday. You're meeting me there, right? That's right, mate. You need someone to put that uh, baby all on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, don't tell everyone our secrets. Hey, but um, obviously we've got old Justin over here, the big, the big Yeti. Have you got any young stories? <laughs> you old? What do you mean old? Oh, you're oh, young. Yeah, young. Young, young, young I should say. We heard he's a bit of a grub. You got any stories uh, about <laughs> Justin when you played against him? Yeah, well, we, we played against each other a few times, but uh, we, um, I've never played with Justin apart from um, classic Wallabies. And let me tell you, <laughs> the older you get, um, the less you really want to have a shower with uh, without speedos on. Let me tell you that with Justin. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You're, you, you are one of my favourite shower buddies, Tim. You always make me feel pretty good about myself. <laughs> 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 minus, that was minus two in Auckland when we did that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Timmy, good to see you again, mate. Um, just got a quick question for you. Obviously, the boys are coming to, to Auckland. Uh, what was your best nightlife story when you were in, uh, back in the old days, mate? Surely you got a pearler for us. Uh, back in Auckland, yeah. Uh, probably, um, probably not in Auckland, but when long, long time ago, when we won the Bledisloe <laughs> Cup, you might remember... Uh, you probably weren't born then, Brent, but 1990. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 1990 in Wellington, we won the third test match and uh, we went for a, a swim in the Wellington Harbour at midnight, myself, Nick Farr, Jones and a few guys. And oh, I just think that, you know, we enjoyed jumping in the harbour. And uh, <laughs> but it was, It's been a long time, boys. I think I've only won one game at Eden Park, might have been against the Blues a long time ago. So I think the Wallabies, quite seriously, will need to probably have to adjust the way they play the game. They're probably going to have to kick a lot more than they did in Perth, where it was quite dry. Mm. To me, OK, well, let's be honest. Give us the feel in Australia at the moment. Is this the year? Is this the year you're going to take the Bledisloe out back off us? Well, just give us one year. We only have one year every single <laughs> <laughs> just, just give us one year. Uh, I'd like to hope so. I mean, what, um, boys, what it's done last week in Perth was incredible. I'm sure Justin will, will talk a bit more about it. But, um, you know, 61,000 people in Perth, it's actually just given people hope. Um, hope if you've bought tickets to the Rugby World Cup, if you bought tickets this weekend in Auckland, uh, and just generally if you watch on TV, it's given people hope, and that's all we need at the moment. And uh, um, I'm not too worried about the All Blacks. They'll, they'll hit back on Saturday night. They'll be very hard to beat, and, and we respect them greatly. And you know, the great thing about Kiwis and Australians, we both love this Bledisloe Cup clash. We both love great sporting moments, and we both love living in Australia. Hey, thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> thanks uh, so much for joining that us was again, tough. God, it was, You're that not was pixelated tough. this time, as there's no Clarkie on camera, but you're definitely getting closer and closer with that selfie. <laughs> thanks, guys. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, I'll see you over there in the next 24 hours. And um, is he looking forward to our little trip up to Noosa? <laughs> yeah, but I'll see you there, mate. I'll see you tomorrow. We're okay. on. See you, guys. <laughs> see Cheers you. to me. Cheers to me. It's always a great to have him on the show, isn't it? We'll have to get a bottle He's of a red wine and a candle. He's good. Oh, oh. Dinner light like dinner tomorrow, yeah? Wow. We're going to talk about Aussie, Aussie, Aussies, oi, 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 and we're going to talk about the locks. Since you're here, is good. there going to be a significant change since there is Adam Coleman comes in and no Rory Arnold? Tell us. Oh, look, different bodies do have different styles, but one thing I do know is that Rory Arnold and Adam Coleman are very similar. You look at the impact that Adam Coleman came on, to the field, make some telling tackles. You know, they're easy to slip off those tackles. He made them importantly. Rory Arnold's playing some of the best rugby of his career. He's also a late starter at rugby and learning his way into that as well. But what we've got now as well, we talk about pairings and combinations. Backline pairings are very important. Forward pairings.
things are very important as mm. well. So Rodder and Coleman, I expect, will work just as well as Arnold mm. uh, and Rodder. Well, we're going to move on to uh, what we all thought was our man of the match in Australia, and that's Nick White. But I think the real moment of this match, well... It was his mo, wasn't it? His moustache that he's rocking because it is good, that Freddie Mercury style mo. Oh, it is. Oh, look, obviously the mo was outstanding, but I thought he was fantastic on the weekend. His his light, quickly, uh, quick, uh, quick ball was fantastic. Um, I think I saw a stat, it was one, two seconds, so the forwards did their job breakdown, well, especially in that second half when Scooter was off. That's, um, a, that's a Northern Hemisphere style of play, so he's very good at getting in there in messy breakdowns, yeah. which is what you learn from playing in English competitions. OK, well, it's going to be interesting to see if he can repeat the dose against the All Blacks now that they know exactly what's coming. Thank you all for coming in, especially to you, Justin. Thanks for Cheers, coming. Justin, mate. Take it easy on me. <laughs> good <laughs> luck in this good. week. Don't forget the record at Eden Park, a 42-match unbeaten streak. See you next week. Go the Wallabies.